and welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is hiring in slums. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you've got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co, or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive colors on the website, or get a blank one on Amazon Prime. All right, so we had a wonderful interview on Friday with the new person that I'm hoping we're going to bring on. At the very least, we're bringing her on part-time, but uh, hopefully soon we'll be bringing her on full-time, maybe, if she's up for it. Uh, she's someone we've known before, and uh, I think she's going to be an excellent culture fit. We had a great conversation uh, with the admin team, and uh, overall, we were very impressed with both her her explanation and her thinking, but also with her capabilities as a, an assembly person. Uh, she's probably going to be mostly in engraving at the moment, just because that's where we have the most need for help. Um, but it's going to be good to it's going to be good to have her on the team. And you know, it's been interesting because we've seen uh, a shift in our production team as well as just kind of the overall company with the move. I think being in the new larger space has given a certain gravitas to the work in a new way. I don't think that it's um, necessarily that people are going a lot faster or anything along those lines. I mean, I think we'll see that soon, but I think part of it is this sense of this is a real deal, right? Like there's a lot of push on our back end to, to do good work and to do a lot of good work. And part of it's because I think we just have an improved process. I mean, space is a huge part of production. Being able to have the appropriate amount of space to do things well is key. So I think overall, it's, it's good to see that kind of growth. Um, it's good to have that. And when we had her come into interview, it was, a lot, it was a good opportunity for us to kind of think through what we expect from different people. And it also was a good opportunity for us to, to kind of practice the idea of interviewing for a position that's not just an assembly person. Always in the company, in the past, it's always been that when we bring on new people, they're always an engraver, or they're always an assembly, uh, putting products together. And we eventually will transition certain people who are good at that into engraving. Well, the problem is that just in light of some of the nature of the company, we haven't really had anybody doing engraving other than Merrill, and I have other things I need her to be doing. So. This will be the first person that we're hiring specifically for the purpose of engraving and starting her there, which will be uh, new because it's going to require new training. But overall, I think it'll be really good. I think it'll be a good fit. I think she'll be a good part of the team. And like I said, she's, a, she's doing other things as well at the moment. So it's only going to be part time for now. But who knows? Maybe in the future, she'll be a great full time fit. We'll see. It's been an interesting month. We have seen a slowdown in sales. I don't know if I want to describe it as a slump. I know I called it that in the title. And that could be an appropriate term for it. And it's interesting because it's actually not a slump in overall sales. And this is the interesting thing about this is that we're seeing top line income revenue maintain at a relatively consistent, albeit slightly lower than I'd like, but it's, it's been good. But the thing is that we've had 20% of our sales this month being made up of bulk orders. Now, I've always mentioned in the past for this company that bulk orders are not something that we can unfortunately consistently count on. We see them come and go, and it's really hard to exactly predict when they're going to come and what they're going to be related to. And the bulk often is a bit of an interesting question because what qualifies as a bulk? Is a 10-item order? Is a 5-item order? Is a 100-item order? I mean, there's a lot of variance in the bulk orders, and they're not consistent enough for us to count on them. So when I'm looking at the numbers and I'm saying, hmm, 20% of our orders are from bulk sales. Top line, we're doing fine, right? We're seeing similar sales to last month. But if we didn't have those bulk orders, it would be as if we were down 80% or 20% down to 80% of our normal sales. And I've been trying to figure that out and I've been trying to understand why. And it's difficult because we're in the midst of this. Well, we need to hire, we need to grow, we need to move past this current you know, situation, kind of where we're at now and get out of this kind of area. But at the same time, we're seeing slow sales. So it's hard to know. It's like, okay. It requires an iron grip on the steering wheel because you got to be able to say, look, I know I'm confident that we will grow and I'm willing to take the risk of hiring people knowing that we're going to grow. And we, frankly, to be honest, we would need to hire people 
even at the current level. If we didn't, even if we didn't grow, we'd still need more people. So I think that it's, it's, it's something that requires a, a bit of an iron grip. And in general, this whole move has required a bit of an iron grip. It's been more expensive than we anticipated. I'm so glad we didn't end up buying a building because if we would have had to make all of the expense, if we would have had to pay for all of the new equipment and all of the things that we just bought in the new place, as well as all the moving expenses, and we would have had to make a down payment, things would be very different than they are right now. And I'd probably be a lot more worried, but I mean, we're still, we still have plenty of overhead. We still have plenty of, of soft money to, to borrow. So I'm not worried about that, but it's been interesting. It really has. And the thing that I think is part of it, and I was talking with, extensively with the marketing team about this on Wednesday when we had our meeting is that I think TikTok and Instagram are changing advertising in a very real way, and it's happening in front of our very eyes, and it's happening in a very short period of time. And I think what you're seeing is that static images, or what we use, which is a slideshow of static images, I think they are becoming less and less effective as a marketing tool. I think people are responding to those advertisements less and less. Now, we're in this weird position as well, where the advertising on TikTok is still very new. And this is an area where I think Instagram may have a leg up with their reels. And I can't believe I'm saying this. As from an advertising perspective, I'd rather give more of my money to Mark Zuckerberg rather than to a foreign government, which for those of you who know, I mean, China, the Chinese government isn't a part owner of TikTok um, and their parent company, ByteDance. And I never thought that Mark Zuckerberg would be the, the better of the two options. But here we are. So the other thing about TikTok is from a technical perspective is the platform has not really evolved its advertising targeting very well. Now, you may be confused when I say this, but for example, when I look at the ads that I am served on TikTok, they've gotten better as time has gone on, but a lot of them are still not really particularly applicable. And it's hard to know why that is it's hard to know exactly what is stopping them from being good at advertising and what i mean by that is their for you page stuff my for you page stuff is excellent i'm to the point now where i'll like 80 to 90 percent of my for you page um which is a lot i mean that's that means that most of the most of the videos i'm seeing are ones that i like so if they can get their video targeting on TikTok the for you page that good why can't they make the advertisements that good now i have a suspicion and i don't know if this is true and we'll see if my suspicion plays out if you're anything like me and you might not be but when i see the word sponsored in any of my tiktok videos right and there there are advertisements say they say sponsored over the person's name over the company's name i just immediately swipe i barely even watch any of them I mean, sometimes, rarely, on rare occasions, I'll watch. But normally, I'll just be like, nope, don't care. And I'll swipe. And it's because I don't want to see advertisements on TikTok. That's not what I'm there for. Now, I think this is something that was true of Instagram when Instagram first came out and was true of Facebook when Facebook first came out, is that you create a platform with very little to no advertising. And then when you introduce advertising, people are inherently repulsed by it. Now, that being said, I think part of the problem with the algorithm then is that it can't get enough data enough watch data on specific advertisements or on any advertisements because nobody watches the videos long enough for them to really figure out what the audience is. So I do think that technology will change. And I think that people's willingness to watch advertisements will change. Now, it, this is always true. And this will always be true that the way to win in an Instagram or in a TikTok world is to have advertising that's excellent. That's really hard to do. It's really hard to have excellent advertising. It's always been the case, but specifically now. And what I mean by that is on Instagram, on Facebook, on places where you're used to seeing advertisements, I think people are more tolerant of advertisements being boring. Now, that doesn't mean they won't click on them. That doesn't mean they won't engage with them. But we, have I think, have come to expect Instagram and Facebook, because of the saturation of advertising, to have like an 80% um, What's the right way to say this? We, I, I, in my mind, when I look at Instagram, I expect it to be 80% as entertaining as my TikTok. And the reason I expect it to be 80% as entertaining as my TikTok and why I spend more time on TikTok than on Instagram 
and this is and this is not reels. I I have not spent as much time on reels. I spent time on the traditional Instagram. Um, I expect it to be eighty percent as interesting as TikTok, but that's because part of it is the advertising is boring. And so, because I have a lower threshold for what I expect out of the entertainment quality of the Instagram as a whole, the advertising on it can be less effective. It can be more boring and still work. But on TikTok, the threshold, because I, like I said, I like 90 plus percent of the videos, 80, 90 percent of the videos I see on my For You page. And that means that I find them entertaining and enjoyable. So what that means is that the advertising has to be entertaining and enjoyable in a much more compelling way than even regular videos. And I think that creates a very high bar for success. However, I think that high bar for success also means that when you find a video that is excellent and that is good and as an advertiser, it goes incredibly viral. You see this, it's like a casino. You see that you'll, you know, you'll gamble on a specific amount of advertising and then one of them will go crazy. Now, as Gary Vaynerchuk would say, and frankly, anybody else who understands a little bit about advertising, to some extent, the answer is then you just gamble a lot. I mean, the answer is if, if something's going to go exceptionally viral, you just have to put out a lot of advertising. You have to put out a lot of ads, and eventually one of them will, for whatever reason, hit the sweet spot in the audience, and you'll see huge numbers. We just haven't got there yet. So part of the slump that we're seeing in sales, and like I said, I don't exactly know if it's really appropriately referred to as a slump, as more of just as a shift temporarily. And we always see something. We always see the third quarter slow down. We're coming to the end of the third quarter. Third quarter is always slow comparatively. I mean, it's third quarter is going to be better than our second quarter, which is going to be better than our first quarter. But compared to where we want to see our growth, it's a little under our targets. I think the fourth quarter is going to be very good. But yeah, I think part of it is that the shift in advertising has shifted to video-based, TikTok-style, Reels-style advertising. And that's difficult. That's a hard, it's a hard thing to do because it requires an, an increase in creativity and a higher level of creativity from an advertising perspective than is previously been required you know in the old days all you needed was really good photography and uh, the system the algorithm on facebook and instagram would order those various pieces of photography in specific dynamically generated ads that it would experiment with and functionally it would be creative i mean it wouldn't be but it would be sort of creative from a technical perspective where it would take 50 images and it would based off of testing put whatever the proper 10 or 5 together would be with whatever you know, of the 16 different creatives that you put together from a text perspective, it would put those, one of those 16 together and it would create advertising that was better and more effective. But that's shifting. Now you have to put together a video and unlike a dynamic advertising where the algorithm is able to test a variety of creatives and then put together a master creative that is better than all of the individual creatives would have been, you have to create a video from start to finish that's a whole complete unit and then test it. And that takes a lot more work and a lot more time. And it's something we're developing and adapting to. So we'll see. I think we can solve this. I think we can fix this. It's just a change. And part of it's just that we're still behind from our, you know, move and our onboarding. And this too shall pass. A big part of perhaps why we're seeing our sum, our, a slump in our sales that aren't necessarily bulk orders uh, may be related to the fact that we have a seven to 10 day lead time. And that's a very long time for a lot of people. So hopefully. We'll get that fixed soon. By the end of the month, I'm hoping back to be back to our, our maybe one to three or two to four business day uh, lead time and maybe even better than that. Who knows? All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in on Thursday for our next topic. And don't forget to check that subscribe button as well as the notification bell uh, to get notified when we launch new podcasts. If you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, journal, folio, or accessory, please feel free to contact us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co. You can contact us via Instagram and Facebook. You can text, email, call, direct message, all the usuals. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. We do appreciate your patience. If you do want to give us a phone call, you can call us at 414-434-9001. You can call or text that number uh, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. We're not open federal holidays. If you, for whatever reason, uh, aren't able to get a hold of us during those hours or after hours, feel free to leave us a voicemail. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Once again, that's 414-434-9001. If you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow. Both a review on the product or on the podcast, whatever podcast app you're listening on or on YouTube, if you want to leave a nice comment below, that engagement does help. But also, if you want to leave us a review on the product itself, you can go to murdycreative.co slash reviews. You can read all of our amazing five-star reviews. It means the world to me. I love reading them. Uh, They make our day. You go to, it says, do you want to leave a good review? You click yes. It takes you to uh, facebook.com slash murdycreative.co slash reviews. 
Uh, it does, does. Do you recommend the Murdy Creative Company? You click yes and you can write your amazing review. Like I said, we love them. We read them. They're amazing. There's another button on that page that says get in contact with us. For whatever reason, if you have any problems and you would leave us a bad review, please, please, before you do that, give us an opportunity to make it right. We're happy to do whatever it takes. It's personally very important to me that we have a good relationship with all of our customers. And that means that we're happy to do everything and up to including refunds, recrafting. We'll take care of you and we appreciate the opportunity to do so if you're unhappy. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising. It always has been, always will be. So if you want to leave, uh, you know, you want to help us out that way, go to murdycreative.co. In the bottom left-hand corner, there's a rewards button. You click on that, a little pane will open up. If you're logged in when you make a purchase, you get 5% back on any in-store purchases, in-store credit. Uh, but then also you can use, uh, there's a shareable link there. Share that with your friends and family. They'll get $5 off their first purchase and you get $5 back as in-store credit. So it's a great way to help us and help everyone else. If you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, send them my way. I'm always happy to talk about just about anything. And so if you've got something you want to know more about, let me know. If you're looking for multiple binders, journals, folios, accessories, anything we sell for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, we do have bulk discounts. They're currently built right into the cart, so you can just add whatever quantity you want, mix and match to your heart's desire, add them all to the cart, and then it'll automatically apply the proper bulk discount. If you're not 100% sure exactly what quantity you need, and instead you're looking for a specific price point, you feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll be happy to talk through the bulk discount program and help inform you if, uh, you know, what quantity would be appropriate for the price that you're targeting or if we're able to do that at all. But we're happy to talk you through it. Uh, feel free to send us an email, sales at merdycreative.co. That's sales at merdycreative.co. Also, we have no minimum order quantities and no setup fees for custom engraving. If you want to get something with a logo or a design or something like that, as long as it's not copyright protected, or you have permission to use it, that's another exception. Uh, you can feel free to send us an email, sales, S-A-L-E-S, at merdycreative.co with that image attached and a brief description of what you're looking for. It's only $15 flat fee per item, and that is uh, before bulk discounts. So if you want to get just one, we have no setup fees, no uh, minimum order quantities. It's just a simple flat fee, normally $15. Uh, and if you're going to get a bulk discount, you know, or you're going to go buy a whole bunch of them, it can be a lot less than $15 per item. So. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day and goodbye.